Lesson 11 Sharing the Story of Jesus Sabbath Afternoon September 5 God desires us to be cheerful. He desires us to be filled with praises to His name. He desires us to carry light in our countenances and joy in our hearts. We have a hope that is far above any pleasures that the world can give, and this fact should be made manifest. Why should not our joy be full? Full, lacking nothing. We have an assurance that Jesus is our Savior and that we may draw freely from Him. We may partake freely of the rich provision that He has made for us in His Word. We may take Him at His word, believe on Him, and know that He will give us grace and power to do just as He bids us. We may constantly seek the joy of His presence. We need not be all the time upon our knees in prayer, but we may be constantly asking for His grace, even when we are walking on the streets or when we are engaged in our ordinary daily duties. We may constantly keep the mind ascending to Christ, and He will freely impart to us of His grace. Our High Calling, page 148 When the laborer stands before the people to hold forth the words of life, there is heard in his voice the echo of the voice of Christ. It is evident that he walks with God, that he has been with Jesus and learned of Him. He has brought the truth into the inner sanctuary of the soul. It is to Him a living reality, and He presents the truth in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. The people hear the joyful sound. God speaks to their hearts through the man consecrated to his service. As the worker lifts up Jesus through the Spirit, he becomes really eloquent. He is earnest and sincere and is beloved by those for whom he labors. If he has himself eaten of the bread of life, if he has drunk of the fountain of life, he can feed hungry souls and give of the water of life to him that is athirst. His defects will be forgiven and forgotten. His hearers will not become weary or disgusted, but will thank God for the message of grace sent them through His servant. Counsels to Parents, Teachers, and Students, pages 509 and 510. A life in Christ is a life of restfulness. There may be no ecstasy of feeling, but there should be an abiding peaceful trust. Your hope is not in yourself. It is in Christ. Your weakness is united to His strength, your ignorance to His wisdom, your frailty to His enduring might. So you are not to look to yourself, not to let the mind dwell upon self, but to look to Christ. Let the mind dwell upon His love, upon the beauty, the perfection of His character. It is by loving Him, copying Him, depending wholly upon Him, that you are to be transformed into His likeness. Steps to Christ, page 70 Sunday, September 6 Jesus, the basis of our testimony Through the transforming grace of Christ, the fruits of the Spirit are made manifest in the life of those who were once dead in trespasses and sins, in disposition, in words, and in actions, they are seen to be partakers of the divine nature. This wonderful grace was revealed to Paul, and he worked constantly that others might be brought to a knowledge of these saving truths. The Upward Look, page 309 By sin we have been severed from the life of God. Our souls are palsied. Of ourselves, we are no more capable of living a holy life than was the impotent man capable of walking. There are many who realize their helplessness and who long for that spiritual life which will bring them into harmony with God. They are vainly striving to obtain it. Let these desponding, struggling ones look up. The Savior is bending over the purchase of His blood, saying with inexpressible tenderness and pity, Wilt thou be made whole? He bids you arise in health and peace. Do not wait to feel that you are made whole. Believe his word, and it will be fulfilled. Put your will on the side of Christ. Will to serve him, and in acting upon his word, you will receive strength. 
he will impart life to the soul that is dead in trespasses. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. He will set free the captive that is held by weakness and misfortune and the chains of sin. The Desire of Ages, page 203. We must learn of Christ. We must know what He is to those He has ransomed. We must realize that through belief in Him, it is our privilege to be partakers of the divine nature and so escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. Then we are cleansed from all sin, all defects of character. We need not retain one sinful propensity. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 6 quoted. As we partake of the divine nature, hereditary and cultivated tendencies to wrong are cut away from the character, and we are made a living power for good. Ever learning of the divine teacher, daily partaking of his nature, we cooperate with God in overcoming Satan's temptations. God works and man works, that man may be one with Christ as Christ is one with God. Then we sit together with Christ in heavenly places. The mind rests with peace and assurance in Jesus. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 943. In His Word, God reveals what He can do for human beings. He molds and fashions after the divine similitude the characters of those who will wear His yoke. Through His grace, they are made partakers of the divine nature and are thus enabled to overcome the corruption that is in the world through lust. It is God who gives us power to overcome. Those who hear His voice and obey His commandments are enabled to form righteous characters. Those who disregard His expressed commands will form characters like the propensities that they indulge. Letter 44, 1903 Monday, September 7 The Transformative Power of Personal Testimony John did not naturally possess the loveliness of character that his later experience revealed. By nature, he had serious defects. He was not only proud, self-assertive, and ambitious for honor, but impetuous and resentful under injury. He and his brother were called sons of thunder. Evil temper, the desire for revenge, the spirit of criticism were all in the beloved disciple. But beneath all this, the divine teacher discerned the ardent, sincere, loving heart. Jesus rebuked this self-seeking, disappointed his ambitions, tested his faith, but he revealed to him that for which his soul longed, the beauty of holiness, the transforming power of love. The Acts of the Apostles, page 539. We are to be witnesses for Christ. And this we shall be when we grow up daily into the full stature of men and women in Christ. It is our privilege to grow more and more like Him every day. Then we shall acquire the power to express our love for Him in higher, purer speech, and our ideas will enlarge and deepen, and our judgment become more sound and trustworthy, while our testimony will have more of life and assurance. We are not to cultivate the language of the earthy and be so familiar with the conversation of men that the language of Canaan will be new and unfamiliar to us. We are to learn in the school of Christ, yet it is manifest that many are satisfied with very limited experience in spiritual things, for they reveal but little knowledge of spiritual things in their prayers and testimonies. There is less good judgment manifested in matters concerning our eternal interests than in matters concerning our earthly, temporal affairs. Sons and Daughters of God, page 72 All who receive the gospel message into the heart will long to proclaim it. The heaven-born love of Christ must find expression. Those who have put on Christ will relate their experience, tracing step by step the leadings of the Holy Spirit, their hungering and thirsting for the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ whom He has sent, the results of their searching of the Scriptures, their prayers, their soul agony, and the words of Christ to them, Thy sins be forgiven thee. 
It is unnatural for any to keep these things secret, and those who are filled with the love of Christ will not do so. In proportion as the Lord has made them the depositaries of sacred truth will be their desire that others shall receive the same blessing. And as they make known the rich treasures of God's grace, more and still more of the grace of Christ will be imparted to them. They will have the heart of a little child in its simplicity and unreserved obedience. Their souls will pant after holiness, and more and more of the treasures of truth and grace will be revealed to them to be given to the world. Christ's Object Lessons, page 125 Tuesday, September 8 Telling the Story of Jesus When the demoniacs, gnashing their teeth and foaming at the mouth, approach him, Jesus raises that hand which has beckoned the waves to rest, and the men can come no nearer. They stand before him, raging but helpless. With authority, he bids the unclean spirits come out of them. The unfortunate men realize that one is near who can save them from the tormenting demons. They fall at the Savior's feet to entreat his mercy. But when their lips are opened, the demons speak through them, crying, what have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us? Matthew chapter 8, verse 29. The evil spirits are forced to release their victims, and a wonderful change comes over the demoniacs. Light shines into their minds. Their eyes beam with intelligence. The countenances so long deformed into the image of Satan become suddenly mild. The blood-stained hands are quiet and the men lift their voices in praise to God. The Ministry of Healing, pages 95 to 97. What is Christianity? God's instrumentality for the conversion of the sinner. Jesus will call to account everyone who is not brought under his control, who does not demonstrate in his life the influence of the cross of Calvary. Christ should be uplifted by those whom he has redeemed by dying on the cross a death of shame. He who has felt the power of the grace of Christ has a story to tell. He seeks to put in operation methods of work which will diffuse the gospel of Christ. Humanity, drawing its efficiency from the great source of wisdom, is made the instrumentality, the working agency, through which the gospel exercises its transforming power on mind and heart. Lift Him Up, page 230. In the work of cleansing and purifying our own souls, our intense desire to make our own calling and election sure will inspire us with a yearning for others who are in need. The same energy and careful thought which we once brought into worldly matters will be put into the service of him to whom we owe everything. We shall do as Christ did, seizing every opportunity to work for those who without help will perish in their degradation. We shall extend to others a helping hand. Then with singing and praise and thanksgiving, we shall rejoice with God and the heavenly angels as we see sin-sick souls uplifted and helped, as we see the deluded and insane clothed and in their right minds sitting at the feet of Jesus, learning of him. As we do this work, receiving of God and rendering back to him that which he has in confidence lent us to dispose of for his name's glory, his blessing will rest upon us. Then let poor, discouraged, sin-sick souls know that in keeping of his commandments there is great reward, and by our own experience show to others that blessing and service are linked together. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, page 304. Wednesday, September 9. Testifying with Assurance Paul was a living example of what every true Christian should be. He lived for God's glory. His words come sounding down the line to our time. For to me to live is Christ. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. 
He who was once a persecutor of Christ and the person of his saints now holds up before the world the cross of Christ. Paul's heart burned with a love for souls, and he gave all his energies for the conversion of men. There never lived a more self-denying, earnest, persevering worker. His life was Christ. He worked the works of Christ. All the blessings he received were prized as so many advantages to be used in blessing others. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 6, page 1112. He who commits his soul to Jesus need not despond. We have an all-powerful Savior. Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, you can say, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Psalm 46, verses 1 and 2. Let us have more confidence in our Redeemer. Turn not from the waters of Lebanon to seek refreshment at broken cisterns which can hold no water. Have faith in God. Trustful dependence on Jesus makes victory not only possible, but certain. Though multitudes are pressing on in the wrong way, though the outlook be ever so discouraging, yet we may have full assurance in our leader. For I am God, he declares, and there is none else. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22. He is infinite in power and able to save all who come to him. There is no other in whom we can safely trust. In Heavenly Places, page 17. If you are the conscious of your wants, do not devote all your powers to representing them and mourning over them, but look and live. Jesus is our only Savior, and notwithstanding millions who need to be healed will reject his offered mercy, not one who trusts in his merits will be left to perish. Satan suggests that you are helpless and cannot bless yourself. It is true, you are helpless, but lift up Jesus before him. I have a Savior, in him I trust, and he will never suffer me to be confounded. In his name I triumph, he is my righteousness and my crown of rejoicing. It may seem to you that you are sinful and undone, but it is just on this account that you need a Savior. If you have sins to confess, lose no time. These moments are golden. Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled, for Jesus has promised it. Precious Savior! His arms are open to receive us, and His great heart of love is waiting to bless us. That I May Know Him, page 112. Thursday, September 10. Something worth testifying about. Paul realized that his sufficiency was not in himself, but in the presence of the Holy Spirit, whose gracious influence filled his heart, bringing every thought into subjection to Christ. He spoke of himself as always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10. In the apostles' teachings, Christ was the central figure. I live, he declared, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Self was hidden. Christ was revealed and exalted. Paul was an eloquent speaker. Before his conversion, he had often sought to impress his hearers by flights of oratory. But now he set all this aside. Instead of indulging in poetic descriptions and fanciful representations which might please the senses and feed the imagination, but which would not touch the daily experience, Paul sought by the use of simple language to bring home to the heart the truths that are of vital importance. The immediate needs, the present trials of struggling souls, these must be met with sound, practical instruction in the fundamental principles of Christianity. The Acts of the Apostles, pages 251 and 252. The education to be secured by searching the scriptures is an experimental knowledge of the plan of salvation. Such an education will restore the image of God in the soul. 
It will strengthen and fortify the mind against temptation and fit the learner to become a co-worker with Christ in his mission of mercy to the world. It will make him a member of the heavenly family and prepare him to share the inheritance of the saints in light. But the teacher of sacred truth can impart only that which he himself knows by experience. The sower sowed his seed. Christ taught the truth because he was the truth. His own thought, his character, his life experience were embodied in his teaching. So with his servants. Those who would teach the word are to make it their own by a personal experience. They must know what it is to have Christ made unto them wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. In presenting the word of God to others, they are not to make it a suppose so or a may be. They should declare with the apostle Peter, We have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 16. Every minister of Christ and every teacher should be able to say with the beloved John, The life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. 1 John chapter 1, verse 2. Christ's Object Lessons, pages 42 and 43. For further reading, The Sanctified Life, Love for God and Man, pages 81 and 82. And, Selected Messages, Christ Holds Control, Book 1, pages 83 and 84.